John Wick started as a spec script titled Scorn, and it was one of 60 screenplays that screenwriter Derek Kolstad had written, but never gotten produced. But now John Wick is a billion dollar franchise, and yes it's known for its great direction and amazing action scenes, but also its world building, some now iconic dialogue, and the fact that four movies worth of revenge started with the death of one dog, and all of those elements, they start in the script. And there's some pretty surprising changes from the dog to John's backstory, and a completely different final act. So I'm going to go through the script for Scorn, I'm going to spoil everything, and see how it became John way. So John Wick opens at the end of the movie. He's tired, he's beaten up, and he crawls out of his car, pulls out his phone, and plays a video of his recently deceased wife. It's a pretty nice way to open the movie because it's immediately got you asking questions, like what happened, who's that woman, and how did the guy end up like that? It's a nice hook. The script doesn't have the scene at all. It actually opens with John waking up in bed and spends a much longer amount of time with John just walking around his house. It just doesn't properly propel the story forward in the same way without the promise of action. It feels like it takes a lot longer to get going. But the biggest initial change is the way John himself is described. In the script it says he's early 60s, salt and pepper hair, three day beard, former boxer, former military. And reading that is so weird because to me, that description makes me think of someone like Ron Perlman rather than Keanu Reeves. And you could write this off as just an aesthetic difference, but the image makes it feel like a very different character to the one we saw on screen. And so one of the big things to keep in mind when talking about the script, even with the things that stay the same, the interpretation of the character of John Wick feels quite different in the script. And you really see this difference whenever John's wife dies. See, Keanu Reeves gives a performance of a man who feels like he's just trying to hold himself together. Every Everything about his reaction to his wife's death feels gentle and loving, but because of the genre we know he's capable of great violence. But in the movie it's done in a way that feels specific and directed. He feels very controlled in how he acts and directs his anger and violence. In the script, after John's wife dies, he goes home and he starts furiously smashing pictures in the house. He's ripping them from the walls and by the end of it his knuckles are bleeding. He very quickly releases his anger in a very physical way, and I think that's way less interesting. In the movie, I believe that John has decided to leave violence behind, and that he's now a gentle and caring man. And it's only after the death of his dog that he makes a conscious decision to act in the way that he does. The fact it's such a conscious choice by John makes him an interesting character for me. In the script, the outburst makes it seem like John just lets his rage take control of him. He seems like much more of a blunt instrument that tries and fails to keep a lid on his anger, as opposed to the methodical, slick professional of the movie. And it's fascinating to think what the movie would have been with that angrier version of John. Okay, so we all know John gets sent a dog by his wife after she passes, and in the movie, it's a beautiful beagle named Daisy. In the script, it's a corgi called Moose. After John refuses to sell his car to the Russian gangster Yosef, Yosef and his cronies decide to steal his car and kill his dog. Now, killing a dog in itself is pretty devastating, but the dog gets a far more brutal death in the script. See, in the movie, the dog dies off screen and is seemingly killed almost instantly. In the script, she survives the initial gunshot and the gang leave the dog there to bleed out. John wakes up to find Moose bloody and whimpering and then Moose relaxes, licks his thumb, and sighs one last time, passes away. It just sounds so much rougher, and I think it really would have tugged at the heartstrings even more if they'd shown the dog slowly pass away like that. But you can understand why they didn't do it. Getting a dog to act like that would be really difficult, and the CGI required to do it would be really expensive. And you know what? Maybe it might have been too rough to show something as sad and depressing as that so early on. So the death of his dog sets John off to go on his big revenge trip, but word gets back to the head of the gang, Vigo, who is Yosef's dad, and he's furious because he knows exactly the kind of guy they've just messed with. Now the speech that Vigo gives his son is probably one of the most iconic scenes in the whole franchise, but the dialogue in the script is so different. For one, a lot of the iconic lines aren't in there, instead of... Well, John wasn't exactly the boogeyman. He was the one you sent to kill the fucking boogeyman. It's just... John was the goddamn boogeyman. The whole thing about John killing three guys with a pencil, completely absent. And it's amazing that those little lines that became foundational to the franchise weren't in the original script. But what's even more different is the backstory that Vigo gives. In the movie, Vigo talks pretty generally about John and how dangerous he is, but he doesn't go into all of the specifics. In the script, he reveals everything about John, describing him as a former soldier who went to Vietnam at 14, and then while he was there, killed over 400 people, and says he was awarded every military distinction on record, including the Medal of Honor. 
This is fascinating to read because one, it's so different from the movie and it's basically describing a completely different person. But two, because for me, it doesn't really work. By giving all this backstory about John being a Vietnam veteran, it's almost like it's trying to give this full explanation of who this character is and what made him. I think it's supposed to make him feel more threatening and more dangerous by giving you this image that you can latch onto, but it ends up giving too much away. It feels like too neat an explanation. I just find it a wee bit boring to explain it all away like that. With the movie, you don't know who he was before, but everything from the beginning makes him seem like a gentle, caring person. He loves his wife, he looks after his dog, he cleans up the house. The juxtaposition between this nice, caring guy and the killing machine that Vigo describes is way more interesting. And so when the scene intercuts with John smashing the ground and literally digging his past life up, that's so effective. Because we've just had a glimpse from Vigo. We don't know the full extent yet of what he's uncovering. And we don't have to wait long before John shows us just how good he is at what he does. We get our first big action scene as guys invade John's house and he's just annihilating them left and right because he's John Wick. And it seems like this isn't going to really be much of a problem for him until the doorbell rings. Now this is one of my favourite moments in the movie because it's cool and exciting just seeing how powerful John is but then once he's neutralised one threat suddenly he's met with a very different one and there's a big question of how the hell is he going to get out of this one? But then you get this fantastic little scene where the police officer clearly knows John and is involved with that world and he just leaves him to it. Good night, John. Good night, Jimmy. It's a fun twist and it's fantastic world building. This little surprise moment is kind of spoiled in the script. During the fight sequence, they actually cut away from John fighting to the police coming up to the door. And so you get a heads up of their arrival. And when John does talk to the police, the dialogue is a lot more explicit. He says outright that he's dealing with the Russian mob. And I just much prefer it in the movie where there's just this quiet understanding. Now, because all these goons were no match for John, Vigo hires another professional named Marcus to go and kill John. And there's a couple things that change with his appearance in the script. In the movie, we first see him at the funeral for John's wife, and it's a nice way to introduce his character. You get that there's a friendship there, and then it makes it more interesting whenever he later accepts the contract to kill John. That whole funeral scene isn't in the script. We first see Marcus in the script whenever Marcus calls him, and he answers sitting on a beach. So he essentially leaves his holiday to come back to take on the job. In the movie, Marcus just meets Vigo at his house where he's asked to take the job, and this seems like a fairly incidental change, but it's smart for a couple of reasons. One, the entire movie is set showing the underground of this crime world, and I think it would have felt weird visually just to leave that. It's more interesting that it all feels small and local and based around the city. But the other is a practical reason. There's another scene later where both these characters are in the same location. So by changing the location of the hiring scene to the same location as the later scene, it means they can save time and money by shooting both scenes in the same place, which is just smart filmmaking. One of the things that makes John Wick John Wick rather than just any other standard action film is the Continental and the whole underground of assassins that comes with it. There's a world that he inhabits that has rules and customs and the movie smartly never explains everything. You just get little glimpses. So when he goes to the Continental and nightclub bar, people make comments. He pays with these mysterious gold coins. Suddenly this nightclub isn't just any other nightclub in a movie. It's a whole character in itself. For one, whenever John goes to the club in the script, it's not actually part of the Continental. It's just a nightclub club that has criminal activity on the top floor. Compare that to the movie where the bartender clearly knows who John is, they have an established relationship and it raises a bunch of questions like why is John so well known here? They include parts of this in the script in other ways. He walks around and there's people consoling him about the death of his wife and there's even a singer at the bar who even asks if she can sing a specific song that she knows that they both liked. And the world building is kind of nice but all this dialogue in the script from all these characters who talk about his wife and clearly knew her I didn't love that because again the crux of the movie is John crossing from this peaceful life with his wife back into the dark world of contract killers and it's his wife that's the clear dividing line between the two lives. So to have there be so much overlap in the two worlds where all the continental people know her personally and are friendly with his wife it muddies the dividing line and I'm glad it got cut from the movie. There's also a small time jump difference when he arrives at the continental as well. In the script it says he's been out of the game for 12 years but in the movie it's only four and again this is a tiny change but somehow him only being out for four years makes it 
even more tragic that he got pulled back in in such a short period of time. So after Johns visited the Continental, he goes to a club to track down Eosif and he ends up fighting a bunch of people, but Eosif escapes. But John managed to get the mobile of one of the mobsters, which Eosif then rings and John answers and he lets him know that he's coming. It's short, but it's really effective. In the script, this is a lot longer and a bit strange because John uses this moment to really put the fear of God into him and actually starts quoting from the Bible. It's a strange read because it does work in the script, but it's not really something you can imagine Keanu Reeves' John Wick saying. Movie John is so much quieter and sparse in the way he talks. It's one of those changes where there's nothing wrong or bad about it on its own, but you can see how it wouldn't work for who the character became on screen. And it's really interesting to see how the character has evolved, partly around the actor who played him. So then after a hard night of murdering gangsters, John goes for a well-earned rest back at his hotel. And because there's supposed to be no business being conducted on continental grounds, he feels safe to go to sleep. But John is attacked by the assassin Perkins and also overlaps with shots from Marcus as well. In the script, it's five people that break into his room instead of just the one. You think that maybe five people breaking in would be better because it's a tougher challenge, but I actually think it's better in the movie that they reduced it to just the one assassin. Because instead of John just facing against faceless guys again, which we've already just seen him do, they use the scene to flesh out the world. We see the rules of the Continental broken and we see it done by a pre-established character. So it feels like there's more of a betrayal there. So John continues to get his revenge by destroying Vigo's big stash of blackmail and money. And in the movie, Vigo has this all hidden away in a church. In the script, it's all just held in a bank. And I love the change in the movie because the church is an actual hiding place. It's somewhere you wouldn't expect. It's also a really cool set. And there's just something interesting about having all this criminal activity in a place that's supposed to be innocent and holy. In the script, he starts in a cafe across the road and then runs into the bank with a face mask while normal customers are there. Then he fires his gun in the air, he orders everyone out, and it's just drawing a lot of attention to him. Practically, it's hard to imagine how he'd be able to get in there, find the stash, destroy it, and get out without the police arriving, but somehow he manages to do that and get out, and he sits back in the cafe. For me, the church is a way more interesting location and one that seems far more feasible for him to rob. Now, part of why John burns Vigo's stash of money and blackmail is so that Vigo will run to the burning smolders so John can find him and then track down Yusuf. And that's exactly what happens, and John starts shooting at Vigo and his men. Now, in the script, Vigo's car crashes into a pharmacy nearby and Vigo is mortally wounded. He's crawling on the floor of the pharmacy. In the movie, John has a much harder time. He's shooting at Vigo's men, but then he gets hit by the back of a van, knocked out and then captured. John loses here in the movie and I think it was a smart choice because as much as we love his superhuman ability to take on these guys, it's way more interesting to see him get challenged. It almost seems a little too easy in the script. In the movie, John actually needs saved by Marcus and then he goes on to chase and catch up with Vigo. Now the difference in this showdown between John and Vigo is very interesting because in the movie, Vigo has nowhere to go. He has no backup and he has to make a choice. Say nothing and get killed, but save the life of his son or give up the location of his son and survive himself. That's a fascinating choice and it reveals a lot about who he is as a character. And he chooses himself. He tells John where his son is. And furthermore, John respects the deal. He lets Vigo go. And that makes John a more interesting character because even though he's willing to kill everyone who gets in his way, he's still a man of his word. The scene plays very differently in the script. Again, Vigo is bleeding out on the floor of a pharmacy and he knows if he doesn't get medical attention, he will die. So he gives up his son's location in exchange for John calling an ambulance, which he does, but Vigo dies before he can press send. For me, it's a way less interesting choice when presented this way because he's writhing in pain, he's not thinking fully consciously, and he also dies anyway. It means Vigo doesn't have to live with his decision either. It's far more powerful in the movie whenever Vigo is just left standing there, not really knowing what to do with himself. So now that John has Eosif's location, he starts to go after him. And this is when you really start to see the movie and the script diverge in a big way. So in the movie, John goes to Eosif's location and he starts taking down all the guards. And he goes and he kills Eosif. And he does it fairly effortlessly. And you get this wonderful moment where you see Vigo get the news that his son had died. And you know he could have saved him, but he didn't. Now John seems to be happy to have left his revenge there, but Vigo goes and kills Marcus for helping John and not preventing his son from being killed. And once John gets news of that, he decides he needs to go kill Vigo as well. So the whole final act of the movie closes on John trying to kill Vigo. Now, if you remember in the script, Vigo was already dead at this point. So there's this split where the final act of the movie is about killing Vigo and the final act of the script is about killing Eosif. So in the film, there's this whole final fight sequence in the dockyard and it ends with John killing Vigo. 
In the script, Yosef is not just hiding out on a dockyard, but in a massive ship. And you really see comparing the script to the movie, how the budget restrictions change the final act. Because the script has the whole thing of John sniping people from the building, but he then plants a whole bunch of C4 in that building and then jumps into the water to escape the gunmen and then blows the whole thing up. He then swims back up to the dockyard and climbs onto the ship where Yosef is hiding. So you can see why this was cut. John Wick already had a pretty modest budget and having a whole building blow up and having a whole ship set would have been very expensive. And even though it is cheaper, I kind of like how they do it in the movie more. It doesn't go fully over the top 80s action. There's something nice about how dirty and grounded it is and how at the end it's just them wrestling in the dockyard. But anyways, in the script John gets onto the ship and he finds Yosef and they have their final standoff. John fires a bullet into the glass behind Yosef, charges at him and then hurls him through the window. And as he does it he says, Formus. And it's just so cheesy. It almost feels like an Arnold Schwarzenegger line. Like he has to say something big and dramatic for that final kill. And I'm just so glad that they lost it. It's so much more effective in the actual film, the way he just kills Yusuf like he's just any other target. You know, he doesn't give Yusuf any special treatment. In the script, Yusuf tumbles from the window into a big chute full of grain, which drowns him. It's a little bit over the top and there's something especially brutal about him being suffocated, but it doesn't quite match the tone for the rest of it, I think. Interestingly, even though the final fights are very different, the end matches up exactly the same in the script and the movie, with John breaking into the vet and picking up a new dog. So that covers all the major differences between the script and the finished version. And I'm constantly blown away by the fact that even though so much of the core structure remains the same, that the movie on the page can feel so different, just with a few changes. And it's crazy to think about what the John Wick franchise would have been if he'd been played by an older actor. Keanu Reeves isn't known for being the most gifted actor in the world, but he is the draw of these movies, and what he brings to this character is so different to what we saw written on the page. He's quieter and gentler, and I think he makes John way more interesting. As always, I encourage you to read the script yourself. It's great work from Derek Kolstad. And if there's any other movies you'd like to see compared from script to the finished film, let me know in the comments below.